Hi, good evening to everybody and welcome to this week's Maternity and Midwifery Hour. This is, according to my thing, twelve session 12, but I know it's been advertised as session 11, so I'll allow that one. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody to this hour. My name's Sue MacDonald and I'm the curator for the Midwifery Festivals and for these hours. And these hours were specifically designed, and, and forgive me those who people who've come in before but these were designed to provide continuing professional development for midwives student midwives people who want to become midwives and other people who are interested in maternity care um, and they, they come via matflix which is a fantastic video streaming from maternity experts and a fantastic source a res and a resource for any midwives who are actually looking at their revalidation. I feel delightfully smug because I've just done my revalidation. So I was able to get a lot of information, which was absolutely fantastic. So we really were keen for these hours to be a way of getting contemporary information, quite a bit on COVID, as those of you who've come in before will know, um, because that's what's on our mind at the moment, um, whether we try and escape or not. And I am so delighted to be joined by two wonderful people this evening. So I know you're going to have a fantastic evening. And that's Claire Rayner and Elaine Hanzak. And here they are in all their glory. We're going to be discussing long COVID lessons for midwives in where you can say lessons for midwives, information for midwives, certainly. Now, we always start with a little moment of the week just to lighten the kind of uh, atmosphere and get people thinking positive as well as more challenging material. So perhaps, Claire, would you be able to share your moment of the week? Yeah, my moment of the week was I, I don't have children myself. So my nieces are my surrogate children and my 14 year old niece, well, she just turned 14 and I saw her opening her presents on FaceTime and I hadn't seen what I'd got her because somebody else had ordered it and she'd asked for a crescent shaped mirror and she just opened yeah. it and her face was so delighted. So that was my moment of the week. And also not just to see her happy, but to see her develop as thinking, oh, she she wants that for her room. She's got an idea. I really like Fantastic. that. Fantastic. She yeah. sounds like she might be one of these interior decor people in the future. Maybe. It's looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for that. How about Elaine? I know you had an interesting one too. <laughs> yes, I I think like probably many of us, I confess to a little bit of daytime TV. Oh, and no. I know it's scandalous. <laughs> And I happened to catch a, one of the episodes of Tipping Point and there was a lady on with red boots. And I remember I looked at them and I sighed and I thought, oh, they're just like the ones that I have that must be dusty at the bottom of the wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Because as you will hear, it's been many months now since I wore anything on my feet other than slippers or trainers. And the thought then suddenly crossed my mind that along with the great news about the vaccination, that, wow, just maybe soon the red boots might reemerge. <laughs> it, it filled my heart with joy. <laughs> Wonderful. So well, I like to think I like to think the red boots will come into their own. <laughs> yeah. That sounds that's a very positive. Thank you so much for sharing your positive moments. Because mm -hmm. these are difficult times and, and, and everyone knows that most of the UK is under different tiers and some of you will be under three, some of you will be two. If you're lucky, you're under one so you can communicate more with the people around you. But we're, we're looking at Christmas and it's, there's going to be a few little bit more flexible arrangements. You must follow your instructions, though. And if you haven't got the NHS um, COVID app, it's worth getting that just to keep a check on what your local arrangements are. And also you are meant to check in whenever you go in somewhere with your little um, phone. I've just got used to doing the scanning bit myself and it's very magical. And that's meant to make sure that you're told if you come in contact with anywhere where there might be COVID infection and what to do then. So it's useful doing that. Now we're we know that the intensive care units and high dependency care units are still busy and we send out thank yous, big thank yous and love and good wishes to all the staff who are keeping that going. We all thank them in the spring 
they're still there and they're working their socks off to look after people and make sure that the care is exceptionally fantastic for our people, for people who are sick, our relatives and our friends. So thank you to those people and keep it up. And we'll, we love you. We love the NHS. We just love it. It's the best in the world. No question about that. Um, and we also actually need to give a big virtual hug to our people in maternity care because they're, they're not doing the necessary the COVID care, but they're making sure the service keeps going. They're making sure women and their babies are cared for and given information and, and looked after. So also a big thank you to them. We know you can't cancel childbirth and, and pregnancy and people have, are scared. And so we need to make sure that they're, they're cared for. And for anyone, and that's especially relevant to this evening, we want to spend special love and care to the people who are going through either COVID or the after effects of COVID or long COVID. And we're going to hear, hear more about that and how to help people who are experiencing that. And you may have people in your family, you might yourself have been suffering. And this, I hope this will be really helpful. So, and the final big thank you is to all the key workers, everybody who keeps the place going. And that's from the shop people to the transport, to the rubbish, the now refuse collectors, everybody who keeps everything going. We don't take, we mustn't take it for granted because they're doing their bit for, to keep everything going for us. Now, of course, the big news this week, big, big news is the F Pfizer vaccine has arrived and is being distributed and given to those primarily at the moment over 80 plus home care workers and frontline NHS staff at the moment. It's obviously going to take quite a long time, but it has been. And I think anyone who's who's watched the um, footage on the news is, will have been as heartened to see those people getting their vaccinations and how positive that is for the future. So we're all going to get access to these vaccinations it's going to take a while but it's great to see it being rolled out fantastic okay other news for us um december is human rights month important area we need to think about and it's also this week is national grief awareness week and some people will have heard people talking more on the radio on the tv about loss and grief and how they're dealing with it and kind of uh, being very aware that Grief doesn't get sorted out within, you know, you've, you've dealt with losing someone, you just get on with life. We, we know that and we need to really focus on that. So have a look at some of the resources to get more information on that. It's also International Anti-Corruption Day. I don't quite know what we do on that day. Probably try not to be corrupt. That would be a good pl place to start. I was also noticing there's a very interesting campaign from the Rosie in Cambridge called Ditch the Doppler. Yeah, I noticed it particularly this morning, reminding women to be very aware of their baby's movements. I think there's a big move for women to use, be using these wee Dopplers, either with their phones or whatever, to listen to their babies, which can be nice. But also they need to remember to be aware of their baby's movements because babies have a each baby has a personality of his own. And you only the mother will know that that personality. And it, the idea is to if you have any concerns is to, to call your midwife and have a discussion with with that midwife about the, the quality of your baby's movements. So I'm sure that would be backed up by a lot of people within the UK. Also, the Embrace launches this week. So that's the confidential inquiries. That's online on the Thursday and 10th and 11th for those of you who can have some time to um, be on the online activity. Um, and that's, I think that's the news for, for today because I'm going to go and say hurrah for the vaccine away again. And um, do check out the resources page, which will be available online. We've got lots of resources on there from our, both our lovely speakers um, to, to access. So you don't have to scribble down references. They'll be there. Also, remember, because this is, is being recorded, if you don't catch something or you want to have more highlights or you want to watch the whole thing again, which you might well want to do or share with your colleagues, you've got access after, I think it'll be Friday, it'll be available to you. So that's fantastic. Okay, so we're going to have a discussion this evening on long COVID. 
Um, and we've looked at the uh, issue of COVID over the last few months on the maternity services, on how we've cared differently for our, the women and babies, but also how illness, the illness impacts on, on people, patients themselves. And we're going to look at long COVID, which I understand can sometimes follow COVID itself, but also can be a, a kind of entity in itself. But I know we're going to learn more from our speakers this evening. We have, first of all, Claire Rayner. Who... Thanks for watching this video from the Maternity and Midwifery Forum. For more expert opinion and analysis, hit the button below to subscribe.